So I, uh, I gave uh, my four friends here a few questions in advance of our conversation, just to um, give them some time to think about their responses here. And, and really what I want to do is to talk to you all um, just uh, about this Wesleyan way of Christian faith. And before I do that, I'm going to introduce you. We have Jim here, Jim Flanagan, who is uh, a reasonably new member of our church in the last couple of years. We have Steve Fife, who is not a new member of our church in the last couple of years, uh, one of our Sunday school teachers actually as well and heads up our Stephen ministry. We have Judy Burke here who is not a new member of our church here either and, uh, and Judy is a faithful member along with her husband Jack there and we have Jessica Scott um, who sometimes worships here, sometimes goes over to 9.30, sometimes is with, us, is with us at 8 o'clock as well. So really across all of our services. So friends, let me shut up for a minute and ask you all a question, okay? Um, just in, in your life, in your life, Think about your life. What has it meant for you to be a Wesleyan follower of Jesus? Who, who might want to speak to that first? Anyone? Come on, Jim. This is a leap of faith for this me. This is a leap of faith. I know it. <laughs> I, what appeals to it is all are worthy of salvation. I'm worthy of salvation. Mm. And... I just feel that my the Holy Spirit is reaching to me more and my faith is growing stronger. Mm. And that's very appealing to me. And this is, a, this is a recent development in your life as well. Would you say that in terms of just your learning and understanding? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. As Thank I you. told you, yeah. I started up in that balcony, uh -huh. 100 feet away. Uh -huh. just, it was like 100 miles to get to here. And look where you are now, right? <laughs> But it is a, as you know, it's a leap of faith for me. So. It is a leap of faith. Thank you. Thank you. Who else might answer that? Well, I was born Jewish, mm. and uh, by the time I got to college, I was pretty much an agnostic Jew. And one of the courses I took in college was uh, the study of the 21 major religions in the world. By the time you get to 21, I don't know how they can call it major. <laughs> but in there was Methodism, and we studied a little bit about Wesley. And I said, you know, this guy makes a lot of sense. His, this is based on common sense. And then a little later on, I... Uh, became saved when I was in my mid-30s, thanks to a lot of prayer from my wife. Mm -hmm. And the, the common sense religion dawned on me that my wife was Methodist, and God must have a plan for me. Mm. Thank you. Judy, how about you? Well, I, I start out by saying that I, as a teenager, you join the church, you know. This is your mother, your dad take you, and and you join the church and you just start being raised as a person of the Christian faith. I am a Christian. I love to tell people that I am a Christian. Mm -hmm. And through the years, and if y'all will look at me, I've had many through the years. <laughs> uh, uh, Christianity to me and, and anything that the Wesleyan uh, you know, movement in me has just evolved over and I'll be open with you I'm 88 years old mm. and uh, I hope that I still have some more time to give to my Lord and to my Savior mm. uh, I told Pastor Charlie a while ago that I had written all these notes down you know that and he's already said most of what I was going to say to you <laughs> as as Charles as John Wesley had he had three rules do no harm do good and love God mm. this if you take these and you use them every day look what we can become Look what this church can become. Mm. Our doors are open to all those people that are riding up and down out there this morning. If we can just get them to come in and know the love of God. Amen. What a wonderful place we can have. Mm. Thank you, Amen. Judy. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Jessica, how would you add to that? Sure. Yeah, my background um, and, and the way that I came 
into Wesleyanism. I am a cradle Methodist. I was born and raised in the church. Um, my mother is from South Georgia, uh, like Savannah, like Epworth, like all circuit okay. riders are in the family. It was, you would think, pre predestined. We don't do that, we're not Calvinists. <laughs> Actually, what happened was um, I had decided I wanted to join the church before I had even taken confirmation classes. And my mom and dad, too, they both were so supportive, but they also said, you know, you really, my mom especially said, you really need to understand what else there is. What, what else? There's more. And so we spent quite some time, um, my mom's a school teacher, and she took me to the library uh, to do some research and to understand not only um, other Christian denominations, I actually got to go visit lots of different churches in, and um, also non-Christian. So we took a trip down to the Islamic Center. We took, you know, anything that we couldn't find a uh, physical place for me to go, we would go study in the library. And at the end of it, I realized that in Wesleyan theology, we are encouraged to ask questions. And it was such a testament to how strong our faith, how strong your faith is, is when you can question it and come out the other side and still be very much in line with that thinking. And so that was my, that's my background. <laughs> that's how Thank I got you. here. <laughs> Thank you. Hey, let's, uh, let's just keep going into these questions. And I'm really interested in the, um, in how this Wesleyan way of Christian faith has impacted you. Like what, what parts of it have had an impact on you in your time or, um, yeah, what, what would you say to that? Don't forget to talk into that microphone, Judy. <laughs> I'm, I'm so used to just letting it out. <laughs> <laughs> Let it out into the microphone. <laughs> I know, yes. Uh, I have started, and, and pa I'm just going to have to back up. I came to Pastor Charlie one day, and I owned something else. And then I said, what I would <clears> like to do, Lord, I, Pastor Charlie, I would like to learn how to pray. I said, I do not know how to pray. There's so, whatever I give, I, I speak so childishly whenever I try to, to ask the Lord for something. And uh, he suggested something that I, I might need to do. And this is, y'all, this has come to me late in life. And I, it's never too late in life to bring Christ into your life. Amen. But he, he gave me something to start on. And that, like I said, this was a little over two years ago. And I have taken that way to pray a little further. And I do pray. I, I pray for you. I can look at some of you out here and know that you, you're wanting someone to pray for you. I. I pray for my friends. I pray for people that are downtrodden, so to speak. I can look at a homeless person and know that they need prayer. I am learning, and all of us can learn to pray. Thank you, Judy. Steve, how, how has it impacted you? Well, I, I came to Christ when I was a very low, probably the lowest point in my life. And I said, if you can get me out of this mess, I'll be your servant. And I'm still trying to live up to my end of the bargain <laughs> because Jesus lifted me up. I, it, he made me a much more caring person uh, to see people differently, to approach situations differently, and to just want to become a better person and, and by looking at and following the way Wesley wanted to set things up, it just matches right on with my way of thinking and the way Jesus is pushing me mm -hmm. as he continues to push me today to be better. Mm. Thanks, Stephen. Um, Jim, how, how, uh, how has this Wesleyan way been impacting you? What's, what's been making the difference that you were talking about just a few moments ago? Well, uh, to lean on Jessica, theme of questions mm. you know that the thing that's been appealing to me is the 
small gathering of classes. And in those classes, I can always, and you, as you know, <laughs> ask many questions, mm -hmm. doubts, fears, or needed a further explanation. So that has helped my faith grow stronger. And I know that through the, my faith growing stronger, I know the Holy Spirit is speaking more clearly to me and realizing I have a longer way to go, a lot, a lot longer way to go, but I think I'm on the right path. Amen, amen. Thank you. Steve, would you take that microphone again? I want to push you a little bit more because I know I can. Um, talk to me about your, <laughs> your ministry of teaching and how you were called into that and, and what difference that has made, not only to you, but the people that, that you welcome into your class over the long term. Well, uh, I didn't think Sunday school was for me. Of course, I knew a good bit, and so why should I go to Sunday school? But my wife asked me one day, just try it once. So I did. And I started going to Sunday school and, and, and learning more. And I, of course, interacted with a Sunday school teacher. And pretty soon he says, I'm going to take a vacation. Will you take over for me? <laughs> well, unfortunately, the vacation ended up to be permanent. And <laughs> I've been doing it, I don't know, about a dozen years now. And it, it, it deepens my faith by trying to bring the word and the message to to my my class mm -hmm. and it's got to get to me and through me first mm -hmm. before i can give it to them and even today we talked about uh wesley and in that uh, we're supposed to go out and and teach people about christ and bring christ to people mm -hmm. and it, it's really been great for me Thank you, Steve. Thank you. Um, Jessica, how might you respond to some of that? Well, I also <laughs> was a Sunday school teacher um, right up until I was several months pregnant. And then the, the idea of standing with um, for that long and and getting on the ground with kids, was it just wasn't going to happen. Um, and Steve, you're right. Uh, although you think adults are tough, mm, you, mm, mm. Uh, mm, mm. you've not lived until you've had a third grader ask you about, pick a topic, pick a topic, and they'll ask you, why did my cat die? Why, you know, why is my grandma sick? Um, and also, why does the sun shine? And also, why are there birds in the trees? Why go, you know, they have all these questions. And let me tell you, again, questions. <laughs> they they mm -hmm. will, they'll send you, um, spiral, not spiraling, but into a journey of um, discovering your own faith. And, um, you know, those kids and, and my Sunday school teachers, I thought back to all the Sunday school teachers that I had, and I was so fortunate to grow up with amazing Sunday school teachers um, who poured into me, um, and that's something that I really appreciate, these small groups where you are just pouring into one another with teachers like Steve who are pouring into their their um, students and their, their classes, and then at the same time, I'm just, you said this, it's coming right back at you. And before you can even get to teaching, you know, a, a third grader or a 57th grader or whatever <laughs> <laughs> uh, about um, the love of the love of God, you've got to recognize it and understand it for yourself, too. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, I want to get to our last question. Um, so the thing about the Wesleyan way of Christian faith is that it's not just like a one and done deal at the start of your Christian journey. You know, I, I, I now I belong to God and all God's work is done, right? We, we believe wholeheartedly in sanctifying grace, that the best of the gospel is the rest of the gospel. It's the work that God does within us. And all of you have testified to, to that so far this morning. So here's my, my last question. How is being a follower of Jesus in this Wesleyan way how is it changing you today? How is it transforming you in the here and now at these various stages of your lives? Who might want to speak there? Well, I'm sitting right here. Uh, <laughs> I am an introvert. Most people don't know that or recognize that, but I'm, I'm an introvert. Um, I love people. I love them so much. I'm called to love them. Uh, but it's exhausting to be with people. Um, and yet, 
Here I am, I'm serving in several capacities as a, a lay leader throughout the district of conference. Um, and I also have a covenant group. Um, and in my covenant group, we start all of our conversations with how is it with your soul? And it's not just, hey, how you doing? And then you answer fine and you go on about your day. Mm -mm. It is, how is it with your soul? And I want to know the answer. And I'm gonna listen to you and take all of that in and understand and connect and interact in meaningful ways that I wouldn't I wouldn't voluntarily go out and do that. I um, because I don't want to be tired. At the same time, being in that interaction, understanding that I am, I am engaged with someone and, and with this small group of people that I'm in covenant with. They're also engaged with me, and they're walking beside me and praying for me, and we're praying with each other and helping each other, um, and we're not doing it alone. You know, we live in God's world. Mm, we are not alone, amen. thanks be to God. Um, so yeah, so I am, I'm out interacting with other people and amazingly energized by being interact, interacting in that meaningful, impactful way. Thank you. Judy, what might you say to that? How is Jesus transforming you here and now? Well, I, I think that I, I might have just told you a uh, while ago about prayer mm. and to, to what what she's just said here, you know, that uh, to get up here, it, it was a leap of faith to get up and, and walk up here. And after, let me tell you, after you get up here, I'm not afraid. Hmm. We are all the same. Amen. You could come up here and you could give a testimony of how Jesus, the Lord has come into your life and what he has done for you. And we would love to hear it. The preacher would love to hear it. Uh, <laughs> sure. Uh, <laughs> yes, he would. Yes, he would. Uh, he doesn't get up there every Sunday and preach to us, and we don't give something back to him. He's been such a blessing to us. He's taught, many, taught me many things that I can get up here and do this. And he's taught me how to start praying. And that's, that's all I've got right now is that I'm learning. I'm still learning how to pray for myself and for the man I love out there that we have gone through some bad times uh, health-wise. He has pulled us through. You've just got to remember that he's out there for us, guys. Amen. And I, I, I even wrote cheat notes here this morning. Of course, he's already said everything that, that was on these notes here. Uh, except uh, one of the things that said that he, ha he only knew that there was one book. John Wesley said there's one book, and that's the Bible. And that's the first book that we should put in our library, y'all. And in searching him, did you know that John Wesley really died a poor person? Mm -hmm. When he died, he, oh, he had a library full of books. He had a clergy robe that was completely worn out. But the other thing he had was Methodism. Mm -hmm. And that's yeah. it. <laughs> Thank you, Judy. Steve? Well, I've really grown um, in this church quite a bit. Uh, many years ago, was, there was somebody that came up and said they needed to train some new Stephen ministers. And I, you know, to care for other people, me, you know, I, I, and listen, I don't listen, I talk. <laughs> but but, but uh, God pushed me. Mm -hmm. and, and it's just like Wesley says, you have to get out of yourself and get out there and, and help people where they are. And he pushed me into Stephen ministry. Jesus did, not Wesley, but, and it, uh, I got in and, and helping people and being able to, to sit still and be quiet and to listen and to understand and try and to feel what they're feeling. 
And I think that, that, I, that Stephen Ministry is a good part of, of what Wesley wanted us to do, to get out there and help people and bring the Word of God to them. Amen. Thank you, Steve. Jim, what has Jesus been doing in your life? How are you being transformed in these days? I'm, I'm kind of realizing that I'm worthy to be saved and, and to accept that does come with responsibility. Mm. I know that I need to stay on the straight path. I need to grow in ways. And one of the ways that has been tugging on my mind is to help serve others in any other small way I can. Mm. Um, I remember a, a class you have about James. And if you're going to accept the faith, you have to more or less walk the walk and, mm -hmm. and help others. And that's been on, on my mind recently. Mm. So that's, in simplest terms, that's what uh, I've been trying to grow with lately. Thank you. Thank you, all of you. Let's pass that back to Jessica. I've got one specific question for Jessica. I don't know if you know this. Jessica is, uh, is the uh, co-lay leader of our district here in the northeast of Florida. She is one of our associate uh, lay leaders for the conference as well and, just, uh, and has been uh, one of our representatives at our jurisdictional conference and went up as a reserve at the general conference there. So, so Jessica knows um, from her own experience just what it means not only to be connected to each other in our small groups, in our local church, in our local community, but what it is to be connected throughout um, the world and to be, to be a part of a laity that is connected. So Jessica, would you maybe just connect the dots of that a little bit and talk about what it means to be an active lay person in the conference and in the district and beyond the local church? Sure. So yeah, I do. I sit on, um, I'm a co-lay leader for the Northeast District, and then I'm also associate conference lay leader, and I sit on the conference board of laity. And it's, it's, it's wonderful in that, you know, here in the local church, memorial specifically, we put on our red love shows up shirts, right? And then we go out into the community. People see us, they know, oh, you're that Methodist church in Fernandina, you're that Methodist church on, on Center Street. And we're in the Hope House, we're putting together meal packs, we're filling food pantries, we're volunteering in schools. People see us, we show up, we know that. And that is a connection here. Now you take that from just the local church and it keeps growing within the district. We're showing up in all these other places within our district. But then also we're showing up in places around our whole conference. So that's most of the state of Florida. And there are, there are Methodists all over the state of Florida who are going to be doing that Wesleyan rooted study. They're going to connect that way. And they're going to be in study and in prayer and in connection with each other there. And they're also going to take away from that the idea that you have to continue serving. And one of the beautiful ways that I've seen it show up specifically is that there are lay people, not clergy, not ordained folks. These are lay people who are who have shown up in when the Southwest District was hit um, recently by hurricanes and I mean just total devastation in several places right like whole churches whole neighborhoods gone the people from the Florida conference showed up with pallets of water with goods with with gloves to start moving debris to start helping they, they showed up they, they showed up for their neighbor. And it wasn't just here in Florida because we understand how that works, right? We, we get that. We know how hurricanes are. We know what's left. There were people from Washington State who showed up, who came and showed up. And they were here and they were showing up in the Southwest District of Florida. Other United Methodists were here. And it grows and grows and grows from there in that you know we also go other places and help other Methodists and non-Methodists, but other Methodists, because we're connected. But I saw it when I went to General Conference, and there were people connected there from across the globe who would have never known 
each other or been connected, but they are because of the United Methodist Church, because they serve together, because they worship together, because they study together. And that connection goes on beyond just these walls, even just this community. I was so fortunate to, to witness and to be part of these connections with folks and have an understanding of the way things are in South Africa, in the Congo, in, in Eastern Europe, in the Philippines, in Korea, and they're connected with the Southeast US and throughout. And so um, that impact, just what we're doing right here is magnified across our connection and that connection is global. Thank you. Thing. Thank you. Thank you. Um, would you give my four friends just a thank you for being brave and 